G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, I guess we got the answer. It was the start of something bigger and much bigger. Look, the markets have just taken a huge tank at the moment. We were at basically 1.7, nearly 1 point, sort of $8 trillion. And now we're down to 1.4, you know, 1, $1.436 trillion. And look, still correcting and going lower again. So, you know, these things are bound to happen. It's not the end of the world. Now, again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. I hope you're not panic selling stuff. I'm not saying selling now wouldn't be a good idea and maybe you can buy it back in cheaper. But look, unless you're really confident of that, sometimes it's better to just hold. I haven't panic sold anything. Uh, I bought things the other day that have gone down 30 40%, but I did that with profits that I made a few weeks ago. So, yeah. I'm not worried at the moment. I'm just holding. I understand the markets. I know how these things work. This is not my first rodeo, as they say. So I'm just basically holding on. I'm not freaking out too much. And look, you know, one man's uh, trash or one man's bad experience can be good for somebody else. This could be a really great buying opportunity. Now, I'm not saying it is. I, you know, suspect Bitcoin uh, and a lot of these other coins may continue to go lower. But look, I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong again. This might be the bottom. Maybe we can wake up tomorrow for anyway, for those of you who are in Australia and other parts of the world, maybe you're gonna actually see it happen. And this just bounces straight back up. I think there's probably gonna be a little bit more sell-off is my gut feeling, but again, my gut's been wrong uh, a number of times before. We'll have to wait and see, but look, Ethereum, <whistles> that lost almost a quarter of its price. So yeah. Very, very interesting. Well, you know, depending, it was over $2,000 briefly and now it's under 1500 So yeah, a quarter and some of its price. And again, Bitcoin was up around, you know, 58 sort of thousand. So it's lost $10,000. So that's sort of, you know, around about between a fifth and a sixth of its price. And again, it could continue to go lower. And some of the other altcoins, I mean, look, they've just been hammered. Litecoin, absolutely pumped. Not pumped as in it pumped up, it got pumped. Chainlink, I mean, look at that, down 28.7% in seven days and 25% in the last few hours. Now me, I went out and bought, uh, where is it? Synthetics token, so yeah, I'm already down 30% and I bought a, a reasonable amount of synthetics token. But in saying that, I'm gonna keep my eye on the price and I'm just gonna continue to buy more synthetics token. I'm still super bullish on the platform. I haven't lost my faith in it. I'm going to buy more. I also bought more Aave. And again, it's down sort of 30%. But look, that's the way it is. I'm still bullish on you know certain projects. So Aave, I'll continue to buy more. Uh, Bitcoin, I'm likely going to buy some more. I'm just going to wait and see. If I'm wrong and the price shoots back up, then I haven't really lost anything. But if it continues to go lower, I am thinking it's probably going to get down to around maybe the $44,000, $42,000 mark. I could, you know, be over pushing it there. We'll sort of have to wait and see. Maybe when I wake up in the morning what the price is. But it wouldn't surprise me if it got down to sort of 42, 44,000. Look, it wouldn't surprise me if it went a whole lot lower. It could go down to 20 something thousand dollars and bounce off the 200 day moving average. We'll have to wait and see. But what is very interesting is look at this. ETH gas prices. I have no idea what's going on right now, whether it's people, you know, you know trying to swap into other alts or what's going on but those gas fees are absolutely horrific yeah you wouldn't touch ethereum at the moment not even the bulls and the whales would really touch it at 550 dollars my only guess is that that is people selling and getting into stable coins that's probably what that is getting into yeah stable coins could be my only guess i couldn't imagine it's people oh then again maybe it's people buying back into projects that they really like with profits they took before at these cheaper prices who knows but yeah though those gas prices are awful all right bitcoin dominance has risen and eth dominance just continues to fall it seems like two thousand dollars was a really significant sort of mark for ethereum to break and look that 60 60k mark was really uh something that was just too much for Bitcoin to break at the moment. I don't think this bull cycle's over. I think we could easily go into a multi kind of day, multi even kind of week sort of month or two sort of bear market. And again, we could slowly pull back right down to 20 something thousand dollars. 
I'm just not sure if that's going to happen though. I think there will be interest. I know I'm going to be, you know, buying if it, particularly if it gets down to that sort of forty-two thousand dollar mark, I'm in. I'll be buying some. And look, if it goes lower, I'll just keep, you know, buying in every time it goes to the next sort of lower price that I'm happy with. So, let's say forty-four, forty-two thousand dollars. I'm buying some. I'll still have cash on the side. I always leave cash on the side. If it then goes down to let's say thirty-seven thousand. I'm buying some. If it goes down to thirty-two thousand, I'm buying some. If it goes down to twenty-seven thousand, I'm buying some, and I'll just keep doing that. And likewise with Ethereum. I mean, if I see Ethereum get down to sort of twelve hundred dollars, I'm buying some. If it goes down under a thousand, I'm buying some because I don't believe this is the end. And you know, I took profits. I was lucky. I took profits at profits at a good time. I've just been a bit unlucky that I put a lot of those profits into. Cardano, Aave, and Synthetics Network, and they've dumped 30, 40% since then. But that's generally a pretty good correction. You know, they, we could correct another maybe sort of 20 to 30% on top of this, but really, we've probably done, you know, the big part of the dump, but look, we could be wrong, and, and I've been wrong before. Anyway, let's move on. Has there been anything that's actually pumped? Anything green? All right, there we go. There has been. So Solana's done well. Swissborg's done well. NEM, Leo Token, Kasama, Tether. Well, Tether's just kind of staying the same. So there has been a couple of things that have, you know, I wouldn't really say that's a pump 6%, and NEM's probably pushing it a bit, but 10% and 35% by those uh, is pretty good. And again, they're, st they're still up for the last seven days as well. But what about dump? What, what got hit the worst in the top 100? Because this is going to be interesting. All right, crypto.com coin. Wow, that is a big correction, but have a look at that. It almost went just straight up vertical and it dumped off straight away as well. IOST, that's hurting. OKB, Dodo, Bitcoin Gold, Ethereum Classic, the graph, they've obviously come way down. That is something I will likely uh, buy more of. I, I was lucky. I sold on the way up. I made my money back and made some profit and I sold very close to the top. Not quite the top. I was a little bit off but not too far from it uh, and I still really like the graph so I'll likely be looking to uh, buy back in. Now the seven days is where we're going to see some good numbers. I mean look how much some things pumped. Uh, ZKS swap 200% in seven days. 133 for MDX. Uh, Pundix, 133%, 109%. So that's why, you know, things are doing this in seven days. It's probably a good time to start taking some profits. Things don't normally go up by that much that quickly. And when they do, you're getting close to a peak. And again, I don't think this is the end. I just think it's a, a good time for a retracement. If you can, you know, call the, you know, if you can consider there being a good time for a correction. All right, but what about down in seven days? Whoa, there we go, synthetics. It's one of the top ones. Uh, and again, I bought this like only 24, 48 hours ago, so I'm down 20, 30% already. But look, I've still got money on the side and I'm going to buy more. Did you buy it? There we go. Tons of big things that have dropped. Again, could be a great buying opportunity. Depends how you want to look at it. For this, for some people, it's the worst day of their lives. It couldn't get any worse. And for others, they're just going, how good is this? I'm going to finally buy those projects I've really liked and get into them super cheap. I just don't know where it is. Are we at the bottom or are we catching a falling knife? Who knows? Let's move on. All right, the Bitcoin chart. So finally, this line can be gotten rid of. It was holding quite well for quite some time. Now we can remove it. So here's the thing. We're not even at the 50-day moving average. We've got to get down to 40,000 before we hit the 50 50-day moving average and that's normally where it's kind of bounced off now it could go lower so we get down to 31,000 that just gets us to the 100-day moving average now get ready to be shocked it could come down to 21 basically 22 21 and a half thousand dollars let's say that brings it back down to the 200-day moving average we have on a number of occasions in previous bull runs come down and bounced off the 200 day moving average. So this could still be bullish, even if it gets way down to here, as long as it made it down to the 200 and then bounced off it, you know, it's not gonna bounce straight off and go like that, but if it does bounce off it and then start finding its way back somewhat aggressively,
that's still bullish. It shows that we're still in a bullish uh, market. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I think we're probably going to get down to around about again 44, 42,000 wouldn't su surprise me. But this may be a bit of a sort of a flash crash. And then we just start to make our way back up. We'll have to wait and see. There seems to be a bit of a coordinate, coordinated attack by uh, some pretty big players. Uh, F2 pool have obviously sold a bit. There's a couple of whales. And look, they're probably shorting the shit out of it. So they are getting more Bitcoin as it's going down. And then they're likely also buying up people's uh, Bitcoin who are panic selling. Me, I am pan panic selling. I sold at about I think I sold it about the price it was now, about a week ago. So again, back here. So I've got some profits. And again, if it just continues to go higher, it doesn't matter. I've still got a good position in Bitcoin. But if it does go lower and get down to, again, maybe the 40, maybe even look the $30,000 range, well, I'm ready to go. Same with ETH. I sold some Bitcoin. I sold some ETH. I sold some Litecoin. And I sold uh, a, a number of my well pretty much 10 percent of all my crypto i told you that the other day so it sold 10 percent of my bitcoin 10 percent of my ether 10 percent of my litecoin 10 percent of everything uh, so i've got some profits on the sh side should they go a lot lower i'm not ready to dump it all in at the moment i'm happy to keep my 10 percent cash position in case this bounces and goes higher and it really won't be until bitcoin gets around the 43 42 ish thousand dollars that I'll just start to buy some Bitcoin. I won't be just piling in because I'd hate to chuck all my money in and then find out, I don't know, we were going down here. So for me, whatever cash I have at 44,000, I'm probably happy to put in maybe 20% of my cash. Then if it gets down to around kind of, you know, the mid sort of 30s, I'll put in maybe another 20% of all my cash. And then if it starts to get way down into the 20s and that'll probably start to put in 50% of whatever cash I have because I figure that's going to be a great buying opportunity. Not saying it is going down there, just things that I'm considering. All right, how about this? Ethereum on Kraken crashed 63% to $700. Oh, I would have snapped that up in such a heartbeat. Uh, I was at work, I've been at work all day, that's why I'm doing this late video. Uh, so I wouldn't have had a chance anyway, but if I could have and if I had have known it was going to do that I would have been all over Ethereum at 700 Doesn't mean I'm right doesn't mean it was a good price It could go lower than 700 or we may get down to again around about 1200 is where I think ETH might go And then we're going to bounce and it's going to I don't know if we're going to bounce straight back up That's probably not a great way to explain it, but I do think we will find a bottom for Ethereum around about 1200. I think we'll find a bottom for Bitcoin around about sort of 40, 42 to 44,000. So let's just say sort of 43,000. But I could be wrong. We'll have to wait and see. This could play out over a number of weeks, days, and look, maybe even a month or two. We'll just have to wait and see. All right, not good news for Ripple. So MoneyGram suspends trading on Ripple's platform. Price slumps 15%. So yeah, XRP, they just cannot catch a break at the moment. And, you know, this whole SEC thing has really been tough on them. And I just can't see anything changing until it gets sorted one way or the other. And if it gets sorted by they admit they're a security and pay a fine, I still think they're going to have a really hard time to continue to use uh, XRP. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe there's things happening behind the scenes that none of us really know about. But at the moment, it, I'm glad I got out of my XRP position. Uh, I made so much more money by getting out and putting it into other things. Whether I will remain happy into the future is another story. But look, I can tell you right now, if out of nowhere, XRP suddenly gets deemed not a security, I will be looking to buy back in. But I just can't do it while there is this whole lawsuit hanging over their heads. I've still got a little bit of skin in the game. Literally only like, I think maybe $2,000 worth of Ripple or some or XRP. Uh, and I'll just hold on to that. If it goes to zero, it goes to zero. But if it goes to the moon, as they say, well, then again, I've got some skin in the game. All right, Coinbase, whale accumulation could prevent Bitcoin dropping below 44000 And so I didn't read this when I said my prediction. Uh, I read this after, even though... He won't have seen that, but I was thinking the whole time, yeah, I reckon it'll probably get down to maybe 44, 42. And I go ahead and read this, and sure enough, there it is. They said around about 44. So again, really, I was probably $1,000 lower because I said 42 to 44. So that's 
43 if we sort of round it off. But look, it could go lower. Really, there has to be some good buying pressure at the moment for it to stay at the price as it is. And, you know, this kind of crash, in all fairness, is going to scare some institutional uh, money off. They're just going to go, oh, God, imagine if we had bought it at 57000 and it drops down to $44,000, you know, and we put millions or possibly even billions into it. How much would they have lost? Yes, that is something to consider and something to think about. But, yeah. We'll just wait and see what happens because no one really knows. All right, $24 million lost in second largest day of DeFi liquidations. <whistles> that is a lot, $24 million. But not that much considering there's a couple of billion dollars uh, locked up in DeFi. Still would have hurt though, absolutely no doubt. So the Feb 22 crypto crash has sparked the second largest volume of DeFi liquidations in the sector's history with more than uh, $24.1 million worth of loans being forcefully closed within 24 hours. According to crypto data aggregator DeBank, uh, $13.7 million or nearly 60% of the losses occurred on Compound, followed by Aave with $5.4 million worth of liquidations. Yesterday's liquidations were the second largest to hit DeFi, trailing behind 93 million in margin calls that were triggered by a sudden increase in the price of DAI back in November 26, 2020. So there we go. There's been all sorts of issues with DeFi. It's still not solid. While I really like it, and I've mentioned the projects I like on a number of times, and I'm going to continue to buy into them, I think they are great projects. I haven't been around long enough to you know stand the test of time there still could be really really big problems with them and again you know maybe DeFi just is not ready yet my personal belief is it's not quite ready we're very very close it's just still got some bugs that need to be ironed out and again you know we need to have crypto dispersed into more people's hands and it not just being in the you know hands of a few whales uh, and particularly mining pools and that we need to be able to buy that stuff up and yeah, have a healthy enough market for it, which we just don't have at the moment. But look, it will get there. We can't have come this far from Bitcoin, you know, being worth a couple of cents back in 2009 to being worth, you know, even though it's $44,000 now, it's a lot less than the 58000 That's still a long way and people are still buying it. It's just this kind of crash is going to slow down. Retail is going to get spooked. They're going to get out. Institutions that don't have hands of steel and really, yeah, just, yeah, don't have hands of steel. There's no other way to put it. They're going to be spooked and they're not going to want to get back in. But for me, I haven't sold anything in this crash. I sold again about a week ago. So I made some pretty good profits. But yeah, I'm not panic selling anything and I'm not going to rush out and panic buy anything either. I'm just going to. You know, I've got my price targets for where I want to see things before I buy back in, and that includes Aave uh, and synthetics. So I think synthetics, look, it could go back down to $7. Now, that's still a big crash from where it is, uh, and I'm not saying it will go to $7, but I just think there's a possibility it might get down to $7. So I just bought a whole lot of 20 something dollars, and I've lost 30% since then. Uh, and I'll just be waiting to see. I probably will buy some more tomorrow. I think it's around about $16 now. And even if it goes to $7, then, you know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. I believe in the project. Uh, and likewise, I'm going to do the same with Aave. Uh, I'll be looking at Chainlink, likely to buy some more Chainlink and Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's me. You're going to make up your own plan and work out what you want to do. Now, let's finish off with a somewhat sort of positive note because it's not all doom and gloom even though we've had quite a reasonable correction. Square's $50 million Bitcoin buy is now worth $253 million. So that's as of today. So even with this crash, if you can get in at the right time, there is sort of untold wealth to be had, even with this correction. Like my portfolio, let me have a look. Now even with this big crash, my portfolio, let me have a look. I'm still not doing that bad. I'm still up around about sort of, oh God, what, what would that be? Yeah, that's about 10x. So yeah, not too bad. Again, unfortunately for me, I, I didn't have enough money to put in. It's not life-changing money. I can't just go and retire tomorrow. I wish that were true. 
But even after this crash, and it could continue to get worse, that wouldn't surprise me, I'm still up 10x from, you know, like sort of March last year. So, you know, you just got to, you know, understand the cycles, be able to get in at a good time. And again, maybe you can read the markets. It's not like I really knew there was going to be a big correction coming, and that's why I sold seven days ago. And I didn't, again, I only sold 10%. So it's not like I knew this was coming. I would have sold a whole lot more uh, if I had have known and been able to pick the top. But I just... After being around a while, I was like, I should probably take some profits here. And it may have worked out to have been a great idea. But again, I'm not going to just rush out and put that money in, or at least all of it in, to find out that we've still got a lot more downside to go. All right, I won't take up any more of your time. It is late here in Australia. So stay safe. Be kind to one another. If you're on that gain train still, you are doing quite well. So yeah, most of us are probably hurting a little bit. But try not to panic. This is just what happens in a healthy bull market in uh, crypto. And I'll see you next time.